Hey, good evening, beautiful friends. Prophet Teresa Lusk here. I'm bringing you a word tonight. I just want to share with you um, about healing your soul. So I'm looking forward to um, spending a little time with you and just uh, ministering to you in the word of the Lord. I can't wait to see what the Lord's going to do tonight. Uh, you know, I'm getting ready to go uh, out of town, and so I wanted to spend a little time um, ministering to you and just loving on you guys, letting you know how much I care about you, and bringing a word that will heal tonight. Amen? Because my whole goal is that there would be healing in your soul, healing in your heart. Uh, yes, y'all know, if you're familiar with my ministry, um, I believe in deliverance wholeheartedly. I believe in being set free, but part of being set free includes healing your soul. So we're going to talk about healing the soul tonight, and I'm going to give you some scriptures tonight that are going to begin the process of your healing if it hasn't begun yet. Amen? So uh, good evening, everybody. Love you all. Good evening, Dr. T. I see you. Love you, my friend. Melinda, bless you, honey. Olivia, bless you guys. Come on in. Come on in. You know, we're going to spend a little time just uh, getting in the word just a little bit about the soul. Hallelujah. Uh, bless you, Monica. I see you, honey. Uh, I see all the sharing that you've been doing. Uh, God bless you. Thank you for uh, sharing. And uh, we. Are, I'm just thankful for everybody who's on. I'm thankful for everybody who's going to watch tonight. We're going to talk about healing the soul. Amen. I really want to uh, pray uh, for healing your soul tonight. I really, really uh, am asking and believing that the Lord is going to do something awesome, beautiful, phenomenal in your soul. There are broken places in, in our soul sometimes, which is your mind, your will, your emotions that are sometimes um, uh, kept from being able to move forward. And so we're going to talk about that tonight. And I'm actually teaching out of my book now y'all don't look at it too closely because I've got it all marked up because this is my my book it's actually my my book itself the unapologetically free deliverance and freedom through the spirit filled life spirit filled life and I've got it all marked up because I use this copy for training and uh, but um, I'm going to read and uh, minister out of uh, healing the soul the grace space that heals and so there's been a lot of deliverance. I was telling someone yesterday that uh, Teresa Lusk Ministries has been heavily, heavily um, moving in deliverance lately of the casting out demons and setting people free from demonic oppression, etc. And it's good. I'm very, very thrilled with what the Holy Spirit's doing because I can't make him do anything, right? He does what he wants and he's been going at it in heavy deliverance. So that's really, really awesome and exciting for me. However, I also know that God cares about your soul. I know that God cares about your mind, your will, your emotions, and your intellect. I need you to hear that. That the soul includes includes the mind, the will, the, the, the emotions, and the intellect. And so we're gonna talk about healing that tonight. And uh, can I tell you that when you are touched by God, you can actually, even while there's deliverance going on, there could actually even be healing of the soul concurrently with uh, the deliverance part. Amen. So we're excited about what God's going to do with that tonight, what he's doing with it. I know that you will be able to heal. And let me tell you something about healing um, and, and deliverance. Do you know that God sets us free so that first of all he set us free at the cross he took care of it cross and resurrection but whenever he comes in and he does a healing work when he does a deliverance work can i tell you that number one that will bring him glory so it's it it, it has a purpose in it and that's that it will bring him glory but number two it also hello my beautiful tara i can't wait to see you tomorrow honey but also um, it allows you to worship God in the fullness of what he's supposed to receive his worship in. I need somebody to hear that. Good evening, LeBron. It, it, it brings forth the ability for you to worship God and for you to live your best life when you are receiving deliverance and healing. Amen. Can somebody say amen to that? I need you to hear that because when you are in bondage, 
when you're in bondage in your soul, when you're in bondage in your flesh, when you're just, when you have bondage in general, um, uh, worshiping God and submitting yourself to God, it becomes more difficult. And so tonight I want to invite the Holy Spirit to begin to set your souls free. To, not, to, to set those places that are broken, torn, tormented, devastated, that he can just bring in the healing touch of Jesus. Because what you, what you put a demand on, what you put a demand on will actually come forth. Because the Holy Spirit's like that. Let me just share a little bit about the Holy Spirit so that you can prepare your hearts as we go into this time of healing and deliverance. And that is that whatever you have a hunger for, the Holy Spirit will pour out. So this is true of events. This is true of church gatherings. This is truth of anything. When you have a group of people who have a hunger for the Holy Spirit to manifest in a certain way, guess what? He pours out accordingly. So whatever you put a demand on, the Holy Spirit pours it out. And so tonight, we're actually putting a demand on the healing of the soul and the Holy Spirit will do his work because he loves you, because he knows that it's already been bought, paid for, it's already been ready for you, it's already been ready for you to take, take on. And I declare that this season is a season of healing for you. It's a healing of, it's a season of restoration. It's a season of untangling emotions, ideas, perceptions, interpretations, old wounds, old words, old things being said, even by your own parents, by those who loved you, by those who were supposed to care for you. It's a season of unraveling so that, I need y'all to hear this because a lot of times we get very selfish and, and we get very inward focused so that you can worship God so much more freely. One of the things, one of the testimonies that I get so often, hello, my beautiful Renee, honey, love you. One of the, one of the more common testimonies that I get from deliverance is that they can read their Bible more. They can, um, they can just worship more. They just feel so good. They feel so free. And that's because that's what deliverance and healing does. It causes you to be able to praise God with his, with the fullness of who he is. Amen. To be able to be restored to the original intent. Think about what I'm saying, because it is, it is a restoration of an original intent to worship God. You were created to worship him. You were created to be surrendered to him. You were created to celebrate him. You were created to be in his presence. You were created to open up your mouth and say, Abba, Father. Abba, meaning Daddy God, Daddy God. It, 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 you were created to be able to say, God, you're good and you're holy. There is no... There's no uh, surprise that angels are in heaven right now saying, holy, holy, holy. There's no surprise about that. If the angels are standing and, and, and worshiping God and proclaiming his holiness, how much more those who were created in his image? Think about this. So let me tell you, so healing of the soul and healing of your wounds and healing of, your, of all the, the, the de demonization it causes you to be able to be pushed into that place. Worship produces all that God wants for you in that moment. It pulls on him. It invites him. It causes him to release all his power on you. But some of you need to know that so that you can begin to uh, feel closer to him and experience him in a whole new way. If you learn to do this, guys, I promise you, you don't have to have Prophet Teresa come over to lay hands and whatever. You'll just learn to do it. You'll learn to experience the power of God in your own living room, in your own car, wherever you are. Amen. So let me just say this. So watch what the word says. But I say, walk by the spirit and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. So it, uh, that's Galatians 5.16. But I say, walk by the spirit. 
and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. The spirit, meaning the spirit of God. He says, if you walk by the spirit, because every believer who's watching tonight, everybody who calls on the name of the Lord and says, I belong to Jesus. He's my Lord. He's my savior. Everybody who does that, you have the ability to be led and, and directed by the very spirit of God. You have the ability to be able to hear him, to hear him direct you, direct you to hear him speak to you, to hear him reveal to you. I need somebody to begin to understand that God wants to speak to you so much more than you want to hear him. Because I think sometimes we don't hear the word, we don't hear the Lord like we want to. And we think, well, God, you know, maybe I don't hear him very well. Maybe he doesn't want to speak to me. Yes, he does. The word just said that if we walk by the spirit, you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. That means that the Lord already made a way to make sure that you can walk by the spirit. God is not cruel to leave you and go walk by the spirit and figure it out. Go ahead and find where he's at. Go ahead and see what he's really saying to you. No, he's already made provision for it. He's already given you his spirit. So you have his spirit who leads you to walk by him, who leads you to walk by who he is. He leads you to walk by the heart of God, the mind of God, the desires of God. Because the flesh says, I want to do worldly things. I want to be into darkness. I want to I want to fulfill my flesh and, and all of that. But the spirit of God leads you to fulfill the desires of God. Okay. So that's right there. Let's just set that foundation, but watch this. Uh, third John chapter one, verse two said, beloved, I pray that in all respects, you may prosper and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. Okay. I know y'all heard the scripture. Third John one, two, beloved, I pray that in all respects, that in every manner, in everything that concerns you, in everything that has your name on it, in everything that you pursue, in everything that's enveloped in your life, in everything that you deal with on a daily basis. He said, beloved, I pray that in all respects, you may prosper and what? And be in good health. How? As your soul prospers. Now, I tell you this often, but I'm going to tell it to you again so that you know your mind, your will, your emotions, and your intellect. It makes up your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, they make up the soul. And so he's saying, I pray that you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. So what happens when your soul prospers, all else prospers. Come on, let, who, who can testify to that? That when your soul is prospering, when your mind feels good, your, your heart feels good, your emotions feel good, your perceptions feel good. When you are able to feel good in all manner, then everything else in your life prospers. So we know that that matters. So watch this. The body will prosper when our soul is healthy. Watch this. King David said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. What was he doing? He was commanding his soul to bless the Lord and all, all that's within him. All, all of who he was. Everything. His desires, his, his passions, all of that. Um, you know, it's important to understand that you can actually command your soul to feel a thing, do a thing, et cetera, et cetera. Now, one of the hardest times that I will tell you to get your soul to get in line with, with, um, with what the spirit wants is when you're grieving, when you're going through a difficult time, when you're going through a hard time, when you've had loss, when you've had a divorce, when you've had a life change that can never be getting gotten back, something that you've lost that has been big, it's a child, it's, it's something, something big and monumental, and you start going through grief, then it's, it's a little more difficult to watch your soul move into the prospering place. But I can tell you that it can still be done many times. I have done it myself when I've been in the most severe grief of my life. I have said in the name of Jesus soul, you're going to worship God today. You're going to be, you're going to be uh, joyful. You're going to give God his praise. You're going to stand up and all this, this lack of joy, it's got to break in Jesus name. And so I begin to tell the soul what it's going to do, but I'm being honest about the grief part because I have found, and I've been doing life as a believer for many years. And I can tell you that grief is one of the things that resists it because grief is a whole nother thing. However, <coughs> excuse me, you can still heal. 
and you can still move forward. So I want you to hear that, okay? Watch Psalm 42, 11. It says, why are you in despair, O my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him. The help of my countenance of my God. I want to, I want to read that again. Watch. Hang on right here, guys. Why are you in despair, O my soul? Have you ever been in a situation in life or a season in life where you're sitting there going, what is wrong with me? Why am I so depressed? Why can't I recuperate from this? Why can't I just heal? Why can't I just move forward? Why can't I just get over this? Why can't I just forgive? Why can't I just, you know, find joy in this? Why can't I this, 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 that, you know, how many of you have can say that you've been in a place in your soul where you just go, why, what is wrong with me? Why are you so downcast? Like literally that's what the psalmist was saying. Why have you become so disturbed within me? Why are you in despair? What is your problem? Why he, he was trying to understand what is wrong with me? Why can't I get past this? Why can't I accept this? Why can't I get healed from this? Why can't I get deliverance from this? Because the issues of their soul, the issues of the soul are a little more complex. I wish I could just say, in the name of Jesus, you come out. That's one of the things that I've had to really learn to deal with uh, in my own personal life because I have a friend who tells me all the time, Teresa, you want to cast everything out. You, you, you want to cast everything out. And, and you can't do that. Grief is not, they're not demons. Grief is not demons. Grief is issues of the soul. It's your soul. It's your soul. It's your soul. And it took me such a long time to get that because I want things simple. I'm not used to things delaying. I'm not used to the process of the soul. I'm not used to the, to the soul waking up in the morning and going, you know what? I don't feel like doing today. I don't feel like living today. Y'all ever done that where your soul just goes, I don't know that I'm in the mood to smile at anybody today. I don't know that I'm in the mood to call anybody. I don't know that I'm in the mood to pray for anybody. I don't know that I'm in the mood to do anything with anybody. Like I, I just think I want to crawl under the chair. And sometimes it's not even me. Can I tell you, let me tell you all the difference, guys. I'm speaking to some of you uh, to unravel the process of your soul that, that you may not even understand that my will, Teresa Lusk's will, my will is to get up every morning get up with joy. Remember, I've told y'all this before. I'm my own cheerleader. Nobody calls me up and says, get out of bed. You got to go to the ministry studio. You got to go do this. You got to nobody. I'm my own cheerleader. So my will <clears throat> is to get up in the mornings and kick butt. Okay. It's to go out there and do what I got to do It's to see people, whether it's in counseling, whether it's a deliverance meeting, whether it's a meeting for something else, that's my desire. I go to bed desiring to wake up feeling ready to go the next day. But the soul in certain seasons, let me just say this, in certain seasons, the soul decides for me what I'm going to do. And that's one of the hardest things because I cannot at times break that. I, try, I have tried. I have tried to pray over it. I've had people pray over it. I've had, you, you name it. I did the whole Christian checklist. I did all that I knew to do. I have prayed. I have fasted. You know, my, I think my friend just would laugh at me because I would fast so that I could break the grief and, you know, whatever. And it was like, what are you doing? This is life. This is your soul purging from a death. This is your soul purging from failure. This is your soul purging from the realities of your new life, of your new options, of your, of your, the people you've lost, of whatever, whatever it is that we've been going through. We go through that. Let me say something. I feel strongly that I need to say this right now. There are some of you who were sexually abused and I say this carefully. I, I pray right now that the Holy Spirit would, would just minister to your heart because I'm not trying to bring a, a shocker in here. Okay. But I can tell you that the Holy Spirit wants to speak to some of you who've been sexually abused. And this was not part of my part. I mean, I was going to allow the Lord to do whatever he wanted, but he's going straight to here and right now. There have been some people who are watching and you've been sexually abused 
and some of your some of your issues that you're going through in life right now they're actually manifesting because it is a form of grief from the loss and the trauma that you had through sexual abuse come on I need somebody to hear this because this is prophetic it is not something I'm just saying I'm telling you it is the Lord's will for me to speak about this and so some of you have some deeply embedded pain and there's some chaos even in your soul right now that you you think I'm just a grown-up looking for direction I'm just a grown-up looking for something some something to do I, I need to head this way I don't know what I'm doing I, I don't know there's just something weird happening in my soul I can't even pinpoint it but the Lord is showing me that this has to do with uh, healing for some of you who have endured sexual abuse and the turmoil is over the loss and over the trauma and over the things that you have faced and that's what I'm talking about tonight guys this is why I wanted to talk about this soul stuff because this is real the soul stuff is real if you can heal your soul can I tell you that your purpose and attaining your purpose attaining attaining destiny walking into it things like that it just becomes like something that takes a, a major step forward because when there's healing there's something about healing there's something about deliverance that causes an advancement and God wants his daughters and his sons healed he wants us being able to walk out the fullness of the life of Christ on the inside of us but sometimes you need somebody to come and tell you you know what you've been sexually abused you've been sexually abused and you're sitting here and you're wrestling through things and you're ticked off at stuff and and you just have this frustration of the soul am I speaking to anybody right now I need you to testify if you feel comfortable enough to say it and say yeah that's me because I know I feel it strongly I know that this is somebody and I believe it's more I know it's more than one person who's dealing with this and I'm telling you that the frustrations of the soul come from a thing that you grief and you go well but that happened so many years ago it happened this this long ago I understand but loss doesn't have an end time do you understand what I'm saying loss amen Connie loss doesn't have an end time it doesn't say you know what Teresa you know what Connie you know what Ronnie it doesn't say you know what this started uh, you know six months ago and so um next month August 15th you're gonna see the wrapping up of your grief you're gonna see the wrapping up of this situation that's happened amen Shelly you know it doesn't happen that way but I'm going to tell you this good evening Kimberly I'm going to tell you this right now that when you begin to acknowledge because see, here's the thing about the soul and, and let me just talk to the church folk okay because here's the thing about the church folk those of y'all who've been in church for a long time y'all know this we are sometimes not allowed to talk about emotions we are not allowed to sit in our feelings we're not allowed to sit in our pain we're not allowed to do certain things like that because people expect you to move on move on move on be the warrior be the warrior I get it I get it I want to be that warrior I want to be but let me tell you something Jesus cared about the soul he cared so much about the soul you know when I think about the story of the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4 where Jesus was talking to her ministering to her you know he was talking to her about uh, you know you know water that will never dry up he was talking to her about her spiritual condition but can I tell you he also had to get to the reality of what has caused some of that pain what was he dealing with soul issues he was dealing with her soul issues if y'all haven't read the story of the Samaritan woman go to John chapter 4 tonight great story open your ask the Holy Spirit to open up your eyes to see things but I'm telling you that he dealt with her emotional state you're gonna tell me you know that that she's had all these men in her life a lot of people assume that she was just you know some little adulterer who jumped around from man to man we don't know what the real situation was okay we don't know what her circumstances were we don't know even culturally back then for women what what she was what she was forced into what she was forced to put up with maybe she was a wild child and went at this man this man this man this man eventually the last one wasn't even his her her, her husband etc etc but you know what here's the thing at the end of the day I know this Jesus spoke to her soul issues because you can't talk to me about my personal life without bringing either a condemnation a conviction or a restoration to my soul or a combination of conviction and restoration or maybe just restoration not everything needs conviction not every soul issue is a sin issue 
Can I just speak to somebody? Some of y'all feel guilty. I'm going here. Here's where the Holy Spirit's going right now. He's wanting to point to, to bring out something. Some of you have condemnation. This is prophetic. This is not me just saying it. Some of you have a condemnation issue because you've taken on responsibility for the offenses that were done against you. The sexual abuse, yes, some of the other things that have happened in your life. And you've taken it on like condemnation. And the Holy Spirit wants you free tonight. And that's not just a deliverance issue. That's not just a let's cast out that demon issue. That's a soul issue. That's a you've made partnership with a lie that now torments your soul. What's your soul? Your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect. Now that comes at you. And maybe it's deeply rooted. Maybe it's very seen. Maybe it's very evident. I don't know. Some of y'all may be in between. But either way, the Holy Spirit wants you to let go of some things that you have taken ownership of in your soul. Come on. I need somebody to hear this. Is somebody hearing this? Is this getting to you? Is this healing for you? Because uh, this is something that the Lord is bringing out to the light so that people can be set free. We, if we know that somebody cares about the soul issues, can I tell you that you will heal? That's why I'm vulnerable with y'all. That's why I'm honest with y'all. That's why I tell you the truth. I don't tell you the truth so you can say, oh, poor prophet Teresa, I'm going to be praying for you because now I appreciate your prayers and everything. Trust me, I appreciate them. I need your prayers. But that's not why I'm vulnerable and transparent and real with you. I'm like that so that you know how to walk through this process. And if I've gotten to walk through a hard process, if I've walked through an uncomfortable process, through a shameful process, through a disappointing process, and then through a victorious process, well, guess what? I would rather just be real and let the Holy Spirit begin to heal you. I would rather you benefit from what I've been freely given. And when I have received healing and because I've received deliverance, I can freely give to you. Hallelujah. And so I'm just saying right now that this is time for you to begin to receive the release of the condemnation. Remember, conviction is this. Conviction is when the Holy Spirit comes in. I need y'all to hear the two different ones, okay? Conviction is when the Holy Spirit comes in and says, okay, honey, what you're doing right now it doesn't line up with your identity in Christ because the moment you guys and girls become the child of God, because you said yes to Jesus, because you gave your life to Jesus, you have a new identity. I know that people see you like the old woman. I know they see you like the old man, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what um, they see. It's what is in the spirit. You've been transferred. You have been transferred into the kingdom of God's dear son. And you've been transferred from the, from the kingdom of dark, the dominion of darkness and transferred into the kingdom of God's dear son. So now there's a whole new identity that you're, that's wrapped around you. And, and what's happened is that there's soul things still attached to you. How you can see them is like webs, spider webs. And there's old things, there's new things, there's in between things. But God wants to come into that place. And he's saying right now, you may have endured some abuse, sexual abuse, et cetera, et cetera. But now it's time for you to let go of that guilt. And it's not just abuse. It's anything. Maybe there was some alcoholism. I see some alcoholism, somebody that was drinking much, even after you became a believer. And so you carry that guilt and your soul stays so convoluted. Your soul stays in a place where you can't rise up and take that breath because deliverance and healing is the breath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a breath and I want y'all to receive the breath of the Holy Spirit tonight that he wants to touch those deeply embedded places those deeply embedded places that even have a message of I'm unclean come on I'm speaking to somebody's soul I know I am I know I'm speaking to somebody's soul who has a deeply embedded message woven into their soul saying I am unclean and that's not of God I am unclean that's not of God you are not unclean. I'm speaking to somebody and the devil doesn't like that he's losing ground today, but that's all right. We're going to bring you to the, to the realness and truth of Jesus because that's after all what he paid for. He paid for your deliverance. He paid for your freedom. He paid for you to walk in purity of the soul, knowing that you are untainted, knowing that you've been made clean by the blood of Jesus Christ and the resurrection and the fact that he sat at the right hand of the father.
And so I encourage you to begin to open up right now. I know the Holy Spirit's moving even as I speak. He is moving. Watch this word. I'm going to give you another another um, uh, a scripture. Yes, ma'am, Miss Tara, I'm, I will do so, baby. Therefore, confess your sins to one another. Watch this. And pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous person can accomplish much. That's James 5.16. I need you to hear. Therefore, therefore, confess your sins to one another. I'm going to stop right there for a second. Can I tell you this real quick? The book of James, the, the, right here, we see, first of all, the book of James is one of my favorite books. I've said it before, I'll say it again. It's one of my favorite books for you because I call it the Christian handbook. Thank you, Kimberly, for posting that. I, I call it the Christian handbook. And it's, it's the most simple four or five chapters and it teaches you a lot about how to treat people, how to deal with your own self, et cetera, et cetera. But he said, confess your sins to one another. Can I just tell you that not just sins, confess your brokenness. Because sin, the word sin means to miss the mark. To miss the mark. So you actually want to confess your brokenness and sins to one another. Amen? You can confess your brokenness and sins to one another. Now listen, I get now more than ever in my life how we've got to be careful with who we share what with. Because in a moment of weakness, in a moment of vulnerability, we share with those who we think are trustworthy, who we think can, can um, keep our secrets, who we think, because listen to me, your sin and your brokenness, those two different things, they are sacred information. Come on, I need somebody to hear this. It is sacred information. Can I tell you that it's this sacred. I'm going to take you somewhere deep, so come with me. It is so, it is a sacred thing because Jesus, your Savior, the Son of God, He had to go to the cross to pay for this sin, to pay for this brokenness to get healed. So when we talk about sin, hello, Emily. Good to see you, baby. I was thinking about you. I hope you get in touch and come on back. Um, when we talk about sin and people's sin, I need you to understand the severity and the sacredness of this sin that people are confessing to you. I need y'all to hear this because if you've ever shared somebody else's brokenness and sin with somebody else for the sake of saying, well, you know, you, you really got to be careful with her. You got to be careful with him. You got to be careful with them because this, that, and the other, and this, that, and the other. Okay, remember this. What is the reason why we are sharing it? Is it to bring healing to the body? Is it to bring healing to that person? Because confession is a must. The Word of God says that, that that's how you'll be set free. That's how you'll be healed when you confess it. However, if we don't understand that people confessing their sins and people confessing their brokenness is a sacred thing, we might overstep the sacredness of that information. I need y'all to hear what I'm saying. I'm not saying that sin is good. Please don't take my words and jumble them up and accuse me of stuff that's not true uh, because that's what happens sometimes. That's not what I, I'm not saying that sin is good. What I'm saying is that when somebody shares their brokenness, that there was such a sacred, important thing that happened for the sake of my healing, their healing, and it was a mighty and high price that blood was involved. Blood was shed. Imagine that blood splattered everywhere. Pain was intense everywhere. Jesus so mourned so heavily that he asked the Father, listen, 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 listen. The Lord said, the Lord Jesus said to the Father, if you can remove this cup from me. Do you know that Jesus' whole goal while he was on earth was to bring the Father glory and to please the Father? He wanted to give the Father his glory. He wanted to do what the Father wanted him to do. But the one time where he said, um, Lord, Father, if you can take this cup from me, please take it. It had to do with having to go to the cross to pay for your pain and your brokenness and your sin and your crazy stuff that we do sometimes and all this and that, which is why, which is why I'm telling you 
that when it comes to people's pain, their soul pain, their sin, that we better take it carefully. That we don't get to use it as our tea time and chat time and coffee time and break time and you know all the things that we do with people's lives come on because we like to gossip because some people have a lust they have a lust for gossip can I just tell you that they have a lust for gossip you know there was something that I had shared and, and, and immediately within not even a five minutes I'm getting messages asking about this, that, and the other. Guess what? Can we please drop the lust for gossip, the lust for information, and understand that we get to share in people's pain? Because the book of James says, Therefore confess your sins to one another, and I will add to confess your pain to one another. Okay? So that's number one. And pray. And pray. And stand in the gap for and stand in the gap for and believe for and encourage and stand for and come against darkness and pray for one another and confess the word of God and release the prophetic word of God and release life and release what God is saying over their life and release that pray for one another what what so that something supernatural can happen what is it what is it so that something supernatural can happen what is it Heal, healing, healing, healing. That's it. So that something supernatural can happen. It doesn't say confess your sins to one another and, 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 and pray for one another so that you may have information to work with. So that you may have something to despise a person with. So that you may have something to cause a disdain towards a person with. It doesn't say that. It says so that you so that they may be healed hallelujah that is god's reward to you that is his reward that's his blessing that's his free gift that's his everything you name it it's it's for that sake so that you may be healed that my friends is how we begin to heal that is how we begin to heal the soul. We begin to acknowledge that God cares about the soul issues. He doesn't just care about the demons that need to come out of you. Can I just say that? And I, I, in this season, like I said, there's so much heavy, heavy deliverance going on in Teresa Lutz Ministries at our events, wherever I go, etc. Et so that's great. But God doesn't forget about the soul. Can I tell you, often when a demon comes out, the soul heals like this. Because you know what that devil's been doing? It's been tormenting the soul. They're in the flesh. And, and, and if you want to understand that a little bit more, go to Romans 7. But it, it's in the flesh, okay? It's not in your spirit, so please don't freak out. It's in the flesh, just like sickness, just like when you sin, you sin with your flesh, okay? If sin can reside, uh, if sickness can reside, well, guess what? A devil can reside in your flesh also. But there is a healing that happens that God wants to touch, and he wants to go there. Some people are afraid to go to those places. Some people are afraid to go to those places. They're afraid to go to the places where the soul is tormented, where it is corrupt. Can I speak to somebody for real about some corrupt places in your soul? Now, this, I feel the Lord leading me to this in the name of Jesus. I feel him leading me to this. This word, this statement that I just made, the corrupt places in your soul. I need you to hear that some people because of all the darkness that you gave yourself to because of what you grew up with because of what you evidenced because of what you watched because of it, you name it there's a corruption in the soul and can I tell you that the soul is correctable this is one of the powerful things I need y'all to hear this come on there's your spirit your spirit is where Jesus resides where the spirit of Jesus resides where the Holy Spirit resides that's your spirit no, when you're a believer, a Christian, nobody can touch that. But your soul can be healed from its corruption. The soul can be healed from the corruption that it carries. Okay? Some of y'all are so corrupt in the soul. And I'm not saying this as an accusation or a mean thing. What I'm saying is you've learned to live shady. You've learned to live unrighteous. 
You've learned to, to try to cut the system. You've learned to try to do this, that, and the other. You've learned to do this and it, and you think it's okay, but you know that healing for your soul would include you being able to surrender that you being able to, to trade that for a godly, uh, a, a godly way of doing something that's healing of the soul. Because, but a lot of people don't talk to you about your shadiness because we like to talk about brokenness and we like to talk about certain other things, but we don't always touch on the corruption of the soul because it makes people uncomfortable because we begin to feel like somebody's accusing me. Who are you? Who are you to judge me? Who are you? Da, 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 da. Can I tell you also, while I'm on the judging thing, can I tell you that the word of God actually tells you, you are allowed to judge a, the fruit of the believer. It, we're not to judge the world because the world can't, they don't have the Holy Spirit to be able to overcome their lifestyles. But from believer to believer, I actually have permission to judge your fruit. So instead of running around saying, who are you to judge me? Who are you to judge me? Go back to the word of God and study it. Okay. Study it. We are supposed to deal with the, with the, with the believers who are acting shady and unrighteous. Now we all, most people go through a season or, you know, seasons of I'm good, I'm good. And then, you know, you're good. And then you, you give yourself over to some things and then you're trying to get yourself free, this and that, this and that. This is why we got to heal the corruption of the soul. Some people ask me, can people who got set free from a devil stay free? I say, yes, absolutely. 100% they can stay free. How? They begin to think, live and act like God. How do you learn to do that? Your word. I tell people, read your Bible read your Bible. It's not an assignment. It's a, it's a, it's an honor. I need y'all to hear that getting in your word is not an assignment. It's an honor getting in your word. When you, when I say get in your word, I mean, read your Bible. When I say get in your word, I mean, get into your healing, begin to take, take of the healing power of God because the Bible actually heals. It heals. Can I tell you where so much of my craziness was healed was through reading the Bible. It wasn't through listening through preaching. Did I learn lots through preaching? Absolutely. I learned lots. There were so many things that I learned, but you know what the preaching really did other people's preaching. It was that I just, it, it, it um, solidified what I was, what I was learning in my own Bible time. It was solidifying the word that I had just read that morning and then God would show up because here's the thing. God's looking for an opportunity to put his fingerprint on your day. He's looking for an opportunity to show you, I'm not just coincidental. I actually did lead you to read this and I did actually prove to you and I'm confirming to you because twice in a day you have seen my fingerprint over this situation, over this moment, over this, what have you, you name it. Okay. So what I'm saying is that when you begin to read the word of God, you begin to get in there, you begin to live this out. It begins to, you begin to see God's hand all over your life personally. Sometimes we feel like God's not even listening. Well, did you give him the opportunity to show up for you for your soul, for your mind to just give you a, a little faith nibble so that you can go, Oh my goodness. God is doing his thing. He is showing up with me. So the soul has some things attached to it. Sometimes um, by the lies that we believe, it has a tormenting spirit attached to it in your mind, your emotions, etc. Um, uh, sometimes it's, it's, you know, just brokenness and all sorts of other things, you know, that happen. That's it. You know, and so tonight I'm just going to say a prayer for you. I'm going to begin to pray for you because I believe that there is healing that the Holy Spirit wants to do tonight. I believe that there is a powerful release of healing that he wants to do tonight. I believe that he wants to set you free. I believe that he wants to activate some things in you and set you to a place where you can begin to what? Begin to move forward. So what? You can bless him. So you can worship him. So you can give him glory freely. There's nothing more beautiful than being able to worship God and give him his praise and give him the glory that he deserves freely without feeling like I'm bored. I'm distracted. Uh, I, I fall asleep. Um, and I'm speaking to some people who, who have issues with, with moving, you know, with staying in the, in the things of God, uh, because your soul, and, and, and some other things are affecting you. Amen. So I'm going to start praying for you right now. Hallelujah, God. We bless you. 
We praise you tonight. We give you the glory. We worship you, King Jesus. We thank you for your kindness and for your love towards us, God. We thank you tonight, God, that you are real, you're supreme, you're high above, above everything. God, you're above a 40-year-old wound in the soul. You are above uh, 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 the, the depression that's bound up to the soul. You are above the soul that's been hit with disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. You are above the words that were spoken that released cursing, that released a, a cursing over them. God, that came into agreement with death and not life. God, you are above that. Lord, you are above the sadness that they feel daily. You are above the loneliness, God. You are above the things that I do not know, but they are known to you, God. So I bless you tonight, King Jesus. We bless you together tonight. We give you praise and we stand together in agreement, believing that as we are all watching together, as we are all celebrating the freedom of the soul together, we thank you and declare tonight that tonight, that tonight, that there will be freedom, that there will be freedom tonight in the soul, that their soul will prosper, their lives will prosper, every area of their lives will begin to prosper because everything will prosper as their soul prospers. So I release right now by the authority of Christ, a prospering ability over you. You already have it because of the Holy Spirit within you. But I release an activation over your soul tonight. I release that you'll be able to receive an activation of healing and prospering right now. I take down that which came into full effect to break your heart. I come against that which came to devastate you, to cause you to bow in tears, to cause you to bow in devastation, that caused you to weep from the depths of your belly, that caused you to cry out to the Lord like never before, that caused you to cry out and say, God, why, why is this happening? That caused you to say, God, when is my breakthrough? through coming. God, give me a breath. Give me another breath for life. Whatever has caused you to break down your soul in Jesus name, I say that that separates from you right now. And I say that the, the healing oil of Jesus is being poured out to you right now. Hallelujah. I release the healing oil of the Holy Spirit all over your soul. Let it be released unto your soul right now. And I know that God is very much involved in this prayer and very much present. I can feel the glory of God. So begin to receive it. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for, be, for beginning to release into the broken places right now. Let the oil of the Holy Spirit find every broken place in your soul. Let it begin to cause you to rise up in healing. I pray that even the wounds that are bound up from you as a little girl, I speak to somebody right now, and I speak to those deep places where even you are bound up with wounds from, being, from your childhood, the places that got lost, the places that were hidden, the places that you had to hide because darkness came to find you, because darkness came to find you at night, because darkness came to torment you, because darkness came to steal your, your innocence. In the name of Jesus, I say that the healing oil of Jesus, it finds you to heal you. Now I'm telling you that tonight God is dealing with a deep wound with wounds having to do with sexual abuse as a child. And I'm telling you that even he's speaking and releasing that you are being healed even from those memories and those things that come at you from childhood. They're there from childhood. You think you're just a grown every once in a while. I think I'm really messed up adult. But the truth is that there are some things, some wounds that are being healed from your childhood. You can't hide those anymore. As a matter of fact, you don't have to hide them anymore. You don't have to. You can live in the place of healing. You don't have to keep them. You don't have to stay in friendship with those old wounds. You don't have to. You get to live in the place of freedom. You get to live in the place of restoration and a breath that Jesus Christ has spilt his blood. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Sarama sere bobo se. Hallelujah, God. We praise you, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are causing those places to be visited. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you that you are causing those places to be visited. 
by your spirit right now that you are literally sowing, gently sowing the things that are opened up, the wounds that are opened up. And there is a freedom being released unto your soul, even unto your belly. I speak to somebody right now and I say, go ahead and put your hand on your belly. If that's you, if you believe that's you, if you believe that's you right now that the Lord is doing something, there's something in your belly right now. I just speak the freedom and deliverance of Jesus from your belly right now. I even command a full deliverance out, 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 a full deliverance out from your belly right now, a full exit, a full fire of the Holy Spirit to fall upon you now in Jesus name. Let the fullness of the Holy Spirit fall upon you because he'll bring healing through that. He'll bring restoration to that. There is something happening right now. I know that there's something happening right now. So go ahead and receive that. Go ahead and receive that because God is doing something. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I know that it might feel weird into your body. It might feel weird, but guess what? That's the healing touch of Jesus. It is strong tonight. I'm telling you, it is strong. I can feel it. It comes in like a wave and it goes out and it, and it does what it does. Heal, restore, reveal. Don't forget that in the touch that I'm talking about tonight, there is a revealing of who Jesus is. See, that's why Jesus heals. This is why the Holy Spirit heals, because if you receive the healing, if you can encounter the healing power of the Holy Spirit, it reveals who Jesus is. The Holy Spirit's here on earth to reveal who Jesus is. Hallelujah. That's the blessing that I want you to hang on to right now. I need you to hang on to that blessing right now. I need you to hang on to that right now. Somebody's feeling a resistance right now. You're feeling a resistance and I even hear the voice of the enemy telling you, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going. I'm staying Ha! I break it now in the name of Jesus. It's going. It is going. Today I declare, uh, I declare as the prophet of God, I declare as the word of God, you are free and free indeed. Hallelujah. You cannot be held back by anything you do not want. Now, if you want agreement with something that's different, but I don't believe, I know without a doubt that the people who are watching tonight, they're not in agreement with these things. These are just things that have been with you for so long. So they think they have ownership of you, but you are owned by the Holy Spirit himself. You are owned by the spirit of God. You are not owned by a devil, a defeated foe. Hallelujah. He's already been defeated. So your freedom is now in Jesus name. Your freedom is now. If somebody is receiving healing right now, in Jesus' name, I'd like for you to go ahead and uh, testify um, that you are one who's receiving healing. I know that the Lord is uh, doing something tonight. He is restoring souls. He is. There is a restoration of soul tonight. I thank God for that because can I tell you that I have began to live my best life as my soul healed, not just as my, not just as I had deliverance from things that followed me for so long, but that my soul healed, my mind, my will, my emotions. Hallelujah, Deb. Amen. God bless you. I'm thankful that God is healing tonight. I'm thankful that he's restoring. Now, I want y'all to pray this with me. Listen, some of you have missed out on the goodness of life. You've missed out on so many powerful things. You've missed out on so many blessings. And I want you to begin to proclaim and ask God and say, Lord, I receive my payback and recompense tonight. I want you to begin to say that, to open your mouth and say, I receive my payback and my recompense tonight. Amen, Felina. Amen, sweetheart. Amen, Karina. Ah ha ha Saramama Serebobo Sikere Baba Seya. Begin to decree and declare that tonight you begin to expect your recompense. And that's not a demand of God, that's a payback for your trouble. Come on, that's a payback for the issues that you've had to endure. That's a payback for the things that you had to put up with. That's a payback for the devastation. That's a payback for messing with God's child. That's a payback for whatever. For whatever. That it doesn't get to stay. Amen? It doesn't. Amen. Y'all begin to proclaim that because there's declaration in that. Listen, let me tell y'all something. There is, there is power in your declaration. I can tell you many times where I'm doing deliverance on someone who's literally on the floor, manifested with the devil. And you know what the devil's doing? He's got their throat. 
He will not let them talk. You know why he won't let them talk? Because I am about to tell these people what to say and the devil knows it. And usually I'm about to lead them to a place of confession and repentance and claiming back what belongs to them and the devil doesn't like it. So what does he do? He literally grabs a hold of their throat, keeping them from speaking. This is why I tell you to go ahead and decree and declare it because you come into agreement with heaven. You come into agreement with the Holy Spirit. You come into agreement with the word of God. When you confess your sins to one another, as the book of James says, when you confess, once again, therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so you may be healed. This is it right here. This is it right here that you begin to, to share those things. You begin to speak of those things with people who can be trusted to do that with. And let me tell you, if you've been burned from little tattletales and, and little, you know, uh, in Spanish we call them chismosos, people who like to tell your business, you know what, guys? I'm sorry that you went through that. I'm sorry that you went through that. May the Lord bring people who are trustworthy into your path so that you can begin to heal, so that you can begin to restore, so that you can begin to be one who brings healing to others. Amen. Amen, my friends. God bless you. I believe that you're that there's much going on in your soul tonight. Listen, I pray that this has blessed you. Go back and read John chapter 4. Go back and read it. Read James 5, 16. Read uh, 3 John. Let me tell you the scriptures again. Galatians 5, 16. 3 John 1, chapter 1, verse 2. Psalm 103, verse 1. Psalm 42, 11, and then James 5, 16. Go back and read those scriptures. Go back and read those so that you can get in the word and begin to see the importance of the healing of the soul. Amen. Hallelujah. My friends, I will be in Savannah, Georgia tomorrow. God willing, I'll be there Friday, Saturday. We're going to just go in there and expect a glorious move of the Holy Spirit. We're expecting the move of God, healing of God, deliverance, restoration, salvation, the glory. I'm expecting God to just move and shake things up and break some things and change lives and change legacies, change families. I'm expecting him to do a mighty thing. Come on, I'm expecting it. And come on out. We are going to be at 2108 Weldon Street. Thank you, my beautiful Tara. Thank you. Come on out, bring friends with you. If you're in the area, you know, if you're just a state away, a few hours away, get in the car Friday and Saturday at 7 p.m. And we're just thankful for, um, for, for the church who is hosting us, Tara. If you could please list the name of the church, honey, because I don't want to mess it up. I want to make sure that I have the right information there. I'd like to be honorable to the bishop, um, uh, so to who is hosting us and, um, uh, Bishop Lewis. So we are thankful for that. I'm thankful for Tara for being the connection. The reason why I will be there because she has so graciously connected our ministry with them. So I can't wait to be there. Listen, I need your prayers too. Amen. So, so I would love it if you thank you living hope worship center. So go on out living hope worship center. Tara already put the information on the uh on the comments also you can just go to my to my facebook page the Teresa lusk ministries page and um and um uh it's it's there with the information okay so i would love to see you guys also we're having a live event sunday at four i actually gave get back sunday morning but then sunday afternoon we're having a ministry time at the studio uh, at the Teresa Lusk Ministry Studio, Sunday at 4 p.m. So we're just going to keep moving in what the Lord is doing, but I sure could use your prayers. I'm, you know, I, I want to see the Lord do some fabulous, out of this world type things, okay? That's why we're going to see what the Lord will do. So my friends, I just thank you so very much for tuning in tonight. Be a blessing to our ministry. We get to do a lot of what we do at the studio because of your kindness, because of, thank you, Karina. I'm so glad you're going to be there, honey, because of your financial blessing. We really, really do. Um, we are able to keep moving. Listen, we're actually growing out. I, we, I am literally, I'm going to go ahead and let y'all know. I am literally moving and, and asking the Lord to guide us to the next place. Um, 
not because we're building people, but like a building, you know, that we're always looking, you know, so many times we get turned off because pastors and everybody, they're always, they want the next big, fancy, fabulous building. I had told the Lord, Lord, I don't feel like doing anything moving wise. I just, can I just stay here? I'm good. I'm here. Um, but you know, uh, um, our life is getting busy at the studio. And so, um, my, our, our, um, our, uh, our lease is up actually. And I have to give notice in September, which is literally 60 days away. So I'm asking God to show us what are we doing? God, what are we doing? So please pray for that, for wisdom for us. Um, as we move, listen, it is all done by faith and it's done by, you know, whatever God wants to do. Amen. So thank you for your kindness financially. You can go to our website, TeresaLusk.com and give. You can also use a cash app with the dollar sign TLM5516. You guys already, uh, um, you know, have many of you have given. I bless you for that. Amen. I bless you. Once again, cash app. Somebody said they don't know how to donate. Cash app with the dollar sign TLM for Teresa Lusk Ministries 5516 or go to our website TeresaLusk.com and you'll see where it says donate. Um, if you, you want to get the money to us in a different way, you can go ahead and um, send me a private message and I will answer. But listen, I'm blessed by you and I can't wait to see you. Um, I believe they might have the services live, if I'm not mistaken. I think they often put it on live. So go check it out. Um, and so follow. I will try to get um, my ministry page up if I can this weekend so that you can partake in what God is doing. But otherwise, I'll be back. I love you. God bless you. And we'll talk to you soon. Take care.